we stand to our feet, we're going to go to Genesis, the 45th chapter. We're going to begin with verse 3. Let me also acknowledge Dr. Perry. Thank you for being here. God bless you. And let me thank my, my partner in ministry crime, Reverend Melanie Whitfield, uh, for being able to be here and carry on. Thank you so much. We're going to Genesis, the 45th chapter. And we're going to begin with verse 3. And when you get it, give me a long, large, still saved. Still saved. All right, all right. On the, on the Zoom, just give me that thumbs up emoji. If you're on the phone, yell, still saved. And we will hear you. So I'm going to read this. It says, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land. For the next five years there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Amen. 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 You may be seated. All right. Look, our sermonic theme today is extending grace. Amen. Extending grace. Look, I, I believe biblically spiritually that we have challenges in our flesh in our humanity that prevent us from extending grace I, I believe it to be one of the most challenging exercises on our Christian journey this notion of forgiveness and moving forward uh, it, 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 it's, it's difficult because it becomes foreign to us and in many ways we try to ignore this biblical obstacle by not holding things against our brothers and sisters and forgiving ourselves for what we have gone through and what we have endured. In our, if, if, if we start in Bible 101 when a person gets saved, the challenge is, is forgiveness, right? But, but most of all, forgiveness for what has been done to you, right? Now, now it, it, it extends, it extends uh, 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 deep crevices, right, and reaches into our soul because salvation will expose these things that are holding us back right right and 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 and, and it then makes us difficult to embrace them because it means that we have to admit that we were wrong right right and that's and that's the challenge that's the challenge for 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 humanity right the going up to say uh I'm sorry, or I was wrong, right? And so, and so because, you know, we like to skip that part of salvation, it continues to uh, nudge us in the head that we've got to let some things go or we can't move forward, okay, okay? Like, like we, find, we find scriptures and we try to skip over them because we say, yeah, you look, I'm going to read the Bible from book to book, from word to word. Then it starts getting deep for us when we start hitting some of these scriptures. Come on. Luke, Luke 6, 31. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Come on. That, that must be a translation mistake. Right, right, right. And we say, how dare the Bible tells me to treat you like I would want to be treated. Oh, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get to Matthew 18 and 21. Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? 
and I forgive him. As many as seven times, 70 times seven. Jesus said, said, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. That must be a translation mistake. That I got the wrong Bible, and this is not what I thought. Or then, or then, church, we get excited about scriptures until we read them all. You go to Matthew 5, 38. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We like to stop it right there, baby. That's my Bible right there. That's my Bible. Then you said, then, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Yeah, it's starting to go down now. Verse 40, and if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. I got to give up my coat too? So I got to, so I'm getting smacked and I got no clothes. Is this my salvation? Right, right, but see, it's see, we want it to say these things that benefit our anger or our dysfunction, right? And, and, and so the Bible presents us these bold declarations uh, of how we have a responsibility to let go of our hurt, our pain, and our discontent, and then see a pathway forward to complete the mission for which we are called. Right, right, right. Now, no greater story exemplifies the concerns for holding on to the past and the challenges and the opportunity for grace and accomplishing the mission for which we are called than this story here of Joseph. Okay, okay, if you're not, if you're not familiar, I'm going to run through it. I'm going to give you a thumbnail sketch, but I think you'll get it. The youngest, he was the youngest of his brothers but he was his father's favorite. He was a dreamer, and his dream centered around his elevation and leadership. And the dream was that he would rise up and that his brothers would bow down before him. He was naive enough to believe that, that he could be this leader, but, it, but, 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 but did not mean that he would not abuse them it only meant that he would be placed in a position over them. Amen. Right, right. And so his brothers feared for themselves and their own insecurities. And so in trying to kill him, they ended up selling him into slavery. And he suffered so much, but he eventually became the victor. Because he was elevated up into Pharaoh's cabinet and attained one of the most important positions in Egypt, right? So, 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 but the thing here is, it's more than him overcoming their hate and disdain for him. It was how he handled it when he encountered them and his extension of grace. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go to verse 4 here, real quick here. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. All right, now, now, Joseph, it sounds good, Biblically, theoretically, philosophically. But if we ourselves are in Joseph's position, be honest with yourself, would you respond in the same way? Come on, come on now. Now think back, go through your lists, right? The persons who broke your hearts, who have stepped on your back and talked about you, 
and said you would not amount to anything. The people who have left you for dead instead of giving you life, you are now confronted with them and they need you because this family had no money, they didn't have no food. That's why they had to leave their land because they came to get food. But the one in charge of the food is the one who you sold in slavery and left for dead. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I need to go back to our scriptures. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Lord, how often shall I, my brother, sin against me and I forgive him as many as seven times? I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times. Oh, you want to stop at verse 38 in 538 Matthew? You have heard. It was said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You could stop it right there. But scripture will not let you do that. And the Lord will not let you stay in this place. You, mo you will continue to be challenged. And the question is whether you can extend grace or seep and, and, and drown in dysfunction and discontent, which means that you will have a life of blaming everybody but yourself. Come on, somebody. I'll be done here soon. First four now, it gives you the steps that you have to take to get to grace. There must be an acknowledgement of past sins. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm your brother. I'm the one you sold into Egypt. That recognition is meant for a humbling of Joseph, but for also his brothers. This relationship, church, cannot be cured if there is no opportunity for forgiveness and for grace. Right, 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 right. And see, and that's, gosh, now I'm getting to my whole America context. I, you get rid of books. You, you don't want to talk about the history. You want to hide what really went on so you can feel better about yourself. You, you don't, you, you, you know, you want us to move on, right? You moved out, people out of the neighborhood. They couldn't, so they couldn't move back in. You acknowledge that land and resources were stolen from people of color because you thought them to be valuable. We were just at the campsite up over here. Uh, oh, gosh, I wish I could remember the tribe. The, 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 uh, uh, up over here in the Hood Canal. And, and I'm getting the tour, and it's come to find out that natives used to use this lane. Right, right, right. You, you, you know, and it's like, it's like things get, and then, we, and then we appease them now with our new sculptures, with our recognition of history, and all of these things. And so, and so until, like, our land cannot cure itself, until we come to grips with what happened before we got here. Right? Now, Joseph recognizes here that, 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 that the elephant in the room is to avoid recognition, okay? So now, now in this verse five, now, okay, let's, go, let's go to verse five. Now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. All right, all right, now here's the grace, okay? But it's not met without accountability. Yes, you did sin. Yes, I suffered for that sin, but God has now used it to save your lives, right? Let's, let's reunite the family. Because if you don't call out the elephant in the room, you can't get to grace, because there will always be something there, right? Right? Now, there's hope, right? When you, when you look at Joseph is re reunited with his brothers, he is released right, from prison because he had the ability to read dreams. He interpreted dreams for Pharaoh. He determined that the entire kingdom was facing seven years of famine. Now, based upon his deciphering of the dream, 
the kingdom was ordered to store enough food, right? And Joseph's brothers had now to come to him for food. They always say, right, be careful, right, on how you deal with people. Because it can, now it can, it will come back. Come on, talk to me somebody. Right, be careful on the way down. Because you may see them on the way up. Okay. And you've got to be able to confront it. Joseph could have, he had the power to lock his brother's up right but 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 and 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 and, and then he could have he could have locked him up in the jail and he would not have been able to see him but that would not have solved the problem it would not right 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 he could not have gotten to grace grace releases us right it causes us not to be held down and held back it releases us from the anger Right, it releases us from the hate, the discontent. We stop seeking comfort in other human beings and only seek comfort in the Lord who saved us. Right, right. And until you or we, as a people, as a church, until we are ready to extend grace, or if you have not in your life, there will be something always tapping you on the back, and you won't be able to get to where you need to get to. And God has a personal interest in this because God needs, uh, needs us to serve and reach out. But if we're still caught up on other stuff, it's, we mad at folks that's been going on the glory. They partying in heaven and we down here upset. When I'm at the river, I ain't gonna even think about you. Right? That would be such a great feat to get, get to the river. Right? To get over on the other side. I'd be so excited. Right? They're not thinking about us. We're thinking about them. Because we're so hung up on it. And so Joseph's example here is to extend grace. Right? Look. It's Sunday school day here. I'm, I'm going to close with this here. Okay? And so as we celebrate... Sunday school this afternoon, right? Look, several of y'all know I'm a Sunday school teacher, but I have to t tell you how I became a Sunday school teacher. I went down to one class just to sit in. That class had Katie Burke, Mother Wiggins, Katie Burke, rest in peace, Mother Wiggins, rest in peace, Mother Henry, praise God, still on this side of glory, okay? By the time I sat down, Katie Burks had declared that I was their new teacher. <laughs> and if you remember Katie Burke, she's very difficult to say no to. So if Katie Burke said I was the new teacher, then I was the new teacher. Okay? All right. All right. Now, now, I, I remember teaching a class. I had all, all three. I always had the smallest class down there. I had all three. I had Sister Katie Burks. I had uh, Mother uh, Hallie Wiggins. I miss these sisters so much, by the way. I miss them so much. I got, it's like your soul continues to cry, yeah. right? But, 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 but the Lord knew best, and the Lord took them on, right? And then, and then Mother Henry. And so I was asking them this question, and I wanted them to respond. I said, look, you have grown up, right, in challenging racial times. Okay? Challenging gender times. It wasn't just, it was race, right? Being, but you were black women. Okay? So there were advantages that you missed out on. Right? There were things that you dealt with, right, that no one else could have had to deal with simply because of your race and your gender. And I asked him, I asked him, right, do you harbor any hate, discontent, right? Do you harbor any regret or disdain? All three of them, Mother Henry is a witness to it, said at the same time, no. I said, what? None, no. Each of them said, 
that if I would harbor those kind of feelings, I wouldn't know Jesus like I know him now. Look, if any of y'all been in Sunday school with me, I'm going to challenge you, right? I'm going to keep going at you. But these sisters held on. I mean, to they say, I don't. Mother, Mother Wiggins been to Israel and back, right? She had been baptized in the Jordan and back. They held nothing, right? Their only desire was to be pleasing to the Lord. That's it. There is so much that we can learn right, from these sisters right, because they have found a peaceful place in the abuse they have taken, right, in the hurt they have sustained, in the pain that they took. They have extended grace and they have held on to God's unchanging hand. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If there's anything, church, that we can get from these sisters and from, and from, and from Joseph. Don't let it hold you back. Right. Don't let it hold you down. Let it, let take control of that hurt and that pain. Take it and ball it up, throw it away, and get to grace. Grace is a much better place to be. Church, when I got to grace, it was a difference about me. I used to hear, I used to hear them say, and I'd be, I'd be out your way, I'd be out your way. Say, I, I, I used to hear them say, you know, the, you know, the older saints, when it's cloudy, I still got sunshine. I used to be like, man, what are they talking about? But when you get grace, it don't matter how much rain Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. It don't matter how much money is in the account. It don't matter what's going on around. It don't matter who died. It don't matter who's sick. It don't matter if you sick. When you got grace, you can raise your hands and say, thank you. Thank you. What you meant for bad, God then turned it around and used it for good. You can say with something, you can say with power that I'm not what I'm used to be, but I'm so much better than what I was. Take a look at me now. When you got grace, you can, in the midst of all the dysfunction, in the midst of a pandemic, you can raise your hand and say, God's will be done. In the midst of grace, when there's no music, you can still sing. When there's no church, you can still praise. In the midst of grace, when you got nothing, you can walk down the street and you'll stop. I remember I, it was one time, church, I'd be out, I keep saying I'd be out your way, but that's, that's that Baptist preacher thing. We'll keep telling you. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I remember I was at work and, and I, I met Grace and I had a cubicle. And I said, Lord, my hands just raised up. And I just started saying, thank you. I said, I thank you for a cubicle. I thank you I got to the cubicle. But if I didn't have a cubicle, if I didn't have a building, yes, I still would praise your holy name. When you got grace, you get up out your bed at night, lay out on the floor and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I honor you. I adore you. Let us move and stay in grace. Don't let this world take away grace. You earned it, keep it, Christ died for it, and thank God we always have a place for it. Come on, let's praise God for his holy word.